In this video, we will continue our discussion about the basic components of a cybersecurity program. In a previous video, we gave an overview of the basic principles found in a cybersecurity plan. In this video, we will begin to talk about the actual specifics in what a security program should cover and the steps to create one. Specifically, we will be talking about policies and procedures. Written policies and procedures should be at the heart of every project. The objective of policies and procedures is to document a project's policy for operation and the procedures necessary to fulfill that policy. Policies and procedures answer the what and how questions for individuals working on a project. For example, what is the project's policy regarding working from home? And how do I get permission to work at home? Written documentation will allow for consistent treatment across the project. Policies and procedures also help to create an internal control framework. It is this internal control framework that management will rely upon and that will ensure the project's objectives are being met. Procedures are distinct from policies in that they provide a sequential or step-by-step -step guide on how to perform a certain task or operation. Policy manuals typically cover any legal or ethical concerns related to a type of business or employment situation. Policies and procedures are in place to ensure that duties and services are performed in a consistent manner. The benefits of being consistent are Employees understand what is expected of them. Disputes may be resolved by determining whether or not policies and procedures have been followed. Plans are already in place in the case of an emergency. It provides proof that your project has strict performance requirements for employees and volunteers, which in the end could improve the defensibility of claims. And it protects the image of the project. Some of the basic policies you should have in place are an acceptable use policy, a policy for incident response, a privacy policy, and a policy on password management. An acceptable use policy outlines for users and staff what your cyber infrastructure can and should be used for. It should be concise and clear, while at the same time covering the most important points about what users are and are not allowed to do with the system. The incident response policy and procedures are the instructions or procedures that your project can use to detect, respond to, and limit the effect of computer system attacks. It would probably be very helpful to talk to campus IT resources when developing this. They can most likely provide a great deal of assistance and resources for this. A privacy policy is a statement or a legal document that discloses some or all of the ways your project gathers, uses, discloses, and manages a user's data. Personal information can be anything that can be used to identify an individual, not limited to but including name, address, date of birth, marital status, contact information, ID issue and expiry date, medical history, it should inform the user what specific information is collected and whether it is kept confidential, shared with partners, or sold to other firms or enterprises. A password policy is a set of rules designed to enhance computer security by encouraging users to employ strong passwords and use them properly. A password policy is often part of an organization's official regulations and may be taught as part of security awareness training. The password policy may either be advisory or mandated by technical means. The final topic in the creation of a basic cybersecurity program is that of risk assessment. Risk assessment is important because it helps create an awareness of hazards and risks. It aims to reduce the probability of risk by adding necessary control measures and precautions. Assessment also prioritizes risk and helps determine if the existing control measures are adequate. This topic is covered in detail in another series of videos. In this video, we have looked at the use of policies and procedures when it comes to creating a cybersecurity team. In following videos, we will cover the other steps in creating a security program. 
If you would like more help with building a security system, please contact CTSC. You can get contact and other information on the CTSC website, trustedci.org. CTSC Online is made possible by funding from NSF, grant number OCI 1234408.